guys, welcome back. So, you know, I've got my mini forge here, my mini furnace that I built, and I've just barely used it. Uh, it's still in good shape, but it's really too tiny for me to do much with. So, I've been keeping my eyes open for other options. Um, and I think it's time to make a bigger one. So I came across this helium tank uh, at a junkyard, bought it for a dollar, and uh, I'm going to turn this into a bigger version of this. But I'm only going to use it as a uh, foundry furnace, not as a forge, so um, it will never be on its side. It will always be straight up and down like that. So that's going to be the first thing that I'm working on. Um, now what's involved with this is I need to make sure that I get all of the helium out of here. I don't, I think it's empty, but I got to make sure that it's empty. Then we're going to cut off the top. We're going to cut this in half. Well, not in half, but we'll cut the top off here. Then I'll weld on new handles and a base to hold it in place. Then we'll fill it with uh, refractory cement. Uh, I'm going to use a homemade mix that uh, I found on the internet, so I'll be doing that. So I need to make sure that it's out of helium. It had the little balloon blower nozzle that you push to the side and the air will, the helium would come out. It broke off almost instantly. It doesn't look like there's anything preventing it from coming out, so as long as this is open, then it should have released everything. I can't move it either direction, so I don't know if it's open or closed. So I'm just gonna work on opening that. Make sure. Oh, there we go. And there's helium in it. Does it work? Hello? It's working a little. I'm trying, it's messing my voice up a little bit. There's a lot in there, so we'll just let it finish off and uh, <laughs> I'm going to open the door so we don't get over helium. I could have blown up some balloons with this, but uh, <laughs> I guess it's too late. Uh, oh, there, it's almost going down. We'll let it finish off. This is not <laughs> the safest way to be uh, inhaling helium, but, you know... <laughs> It's probably okay. Okay, I released all of the helium back out into the atmosphere. Um, so now, the next step is I'm going to cut off this nozzle. I'm also going to cut off these handles. Um, in the end, this top part will be the lid that fits on it, and there will be a hole right here. Well, these handles are going to be right over the hole where all the heat is coming out and I do not want to be grabbing it right there. I'm going to put handles on the side more uh, later. I'll weld some steel onto that as new handles. So for now I'm going to cut these off and this off with the angle grinder. Um, and I think I'm going to take it outside to do that. Uh, and then I'll work on the wire brush to take off this pink uh, paint. Is it on? I can't tell. Am I talking too loud? I've got my headphones on. Okay, so my safety gear. I've got a full face covering uh, because there's sparks flying everywhere and I want to protect not just my eyes but the skin of my face. I've got ear protection because it's loud and I want to protect my ears. I've got gloves on because it gets hot.
edges right here um, razor sharp you see all of that razor sharp so if I weren't careful I'd just cut myself off So for the center space, I've got this eight inch tube form. It's gonna give me an eight inch hole right in the center. Just wanna make sure I make it the right height. So I'm gonna set it in there all the way. It's not gonna be this deep. It's actually gonna be up here, but it's
Okay, I just wanted to show the progress that we've got just before I mix up my refractory cement. I've got the top here. As you remember, I put this tube here in the middle to keep the vent hole. It's not needed, but I like the way it looks. Um, the vent is necessary, but the tube is not. Got handles welded onto that. Here on the main body of the furnace, I welded on some handles. My welds are looking better than they have in the past. I'm definitely improving. Still got a long way to go. Got my base welded on so that this thing won't tip at all. Uh, got a hole cut in. This, is, this will be my furnace um, blower eventually, but I've, I'm putting it in there for now to keep the space. Got this eight inch tube held up at the proper height with this brass rod. So I'll get this all centered, I'll pour the refractory cement in there, um, and then I'll remove this pipe once the cement has set so that there's just a cement hole there for me to slide this in and out of in the future. So I'll go ahead and position this all up, and the next step will be to mix up my homemade refractory cement. I've seen a lot of homemade refractory cement recipes on the internet and there's everybody says one thing or another thing. There's tons of good and maybe not so good information. So I've kind of gathered together A, things that I could get hold of and B, things that I felt like were probably good advice and I'm making my own recipe. So <laughs> it may work, it may not. So let me just explain what we've got here. First of all, this is perlite. Perlite is like little teeny tiny white rocks. It's kind of the white stuff that's in potting soil. Uh, they use it for plants, for aerating and stuff because it allows air to get through. Air is a good insulator. Now the whole purpose of the refractory cement is to insulate and keep the heat inside the furnace that helps the furnace get hotter and it helps the outsides not get hot. So air is an excellent uh, insulator. So the perlite will cause a lot of air holes to, uh, to be in there. Um, now I'm holding that together with Portland cement, Portland cement. Now I know Portland cement is not the right stuff, and everyone warns that Portland cement at the temperatures that we're going to be using will spall, which means it like explosively chips and cracks. Basically, the water that's inside expands, it breaks open, and you get chips. Um, I'm only going to be using a little bit, though it will be... Uh, enough to hold everything together. It's the cement in this. Um, I will make every uh, attempt to dry it out well before I get the furnace up to full temperature. Um, also, I heard that the chemical reaction that keeps the cement, that hardens the cement, uh, falls apart at those high temperatures. There's nothing I can do about that. But um, the other thing that I'm going to be adding to this is sand. I've got a bunch of just general purpose sand that will help kind of stick things together with the cement. And then I got some refractory cement, one pound. It's uh, just one pound. That's not very much, but I'm gonna put that whole thing in. Um, that is good for temperatures above a thousand, or excuse me, temperatures well above 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, which is the temperatures I'm looking at is right around 2000. That's kind of what I want to be aiming for. So I'm using this two and a half quart bucket as my measuring thing. Sand, a pile of sand, preferably cat duty free. There is some dookie around.
Okay, three measurements of sand. Here's the perlite, it's super light. Little white rocks. Three measurements of perlite. So equal parts, perlite and sand. That's one and a half parts Portland cement. And I'm just going to dump in the full pound of refractory cement. Okay, so the water that I'm going to add, it's a lot less water than you expect. I don't know how much, but we're talking maybe not even one whole measurement of water. Half a, half a measurement of water. I'm going to mix this up a little bit. about one and a half measurements of water. Okay, it's now hard, it's not cured yet. It's only been 24 hours, but you can now see what it's gonna look like. Down here is the hole where the furnace burner will go. But looks pretty cool. There's the lid. Okay, the furnace has been drying for about four days. Uh, when I look down inside, it's still, you can kind of see that it's still moist here. I'm gonna let it, I'll let it uh, just dry for maybe a week or two total uh, before I start putting any fire in it. Um, but it's looking good. The lid here is looking excellent. Um, so I'm excited to try this. Uh, this is uh, this is as far as we're going to go in this video, though. In the next video, we'll work on the burner for it so we can get enough heat into it. So thanks for watching. Uh, I've had so much fun doing this. I'll see you guys again on the next video. Later.